joined as always by Ooh. Jose Perez. Also no, okay, you know as... what? No, I'm I'm refusing to speak. You're right. I'm really going to turn into you're fucking right. Jose Perez right. if Eric, this continues. Okay? Eric Ruby is here. You missed in the one show. You missed today. one we got show. DJ Danielle behind the Mac making all the magic happen. Guys, do us a solid. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and leave a five-star review if you're listening on audio and you haven't done it already. We greatly, greatly appreciate everybody Already in the chat, we got Short Bus, we got our sweet Prince Kenny, also known as Donald, also known as Big Devils 12. Also known as our diehard baby boys right absolutely, there. Absolutely, right. absolutely. If you're wondering what a diehard is, well, let me tell you. Just head over to gophnx.com today, click that little diehard tab, and you're going to see everything that you unlock when you become a PHNX diehard. If you are an Arizona sports fan. Suns, Cardinals, Coyotes, Sun Devils, Wildcats, anything in between or anything I forgot to mention. Well, being a PHNX diehard is the best place for you because you're going to unlock diehard only content for the Sun Devil fans in the chat, the PHNX diehards. We got some diehard only content coming for you this weekend. You got the diehard discord, which is always popping off and you get discounts on events, on merch and so much more. You said you were a PHNX diehard before you even got here. Oh yeah, dude. It, it's uh, it's a great place to be, and the uh, the Discord is always popping, and uh, there's much much uh, trash talking uh, oh, as well, and uh, it's it's just a cool way to to build a community and to uh, to talk to people, to talk sports in a non toxic manner, even if there is some trash talking like uh, Donald's doing in the chat. But anyways, <laughs> ASU spring football. Yeah, ASU spring football was out there this morning for practice. Four, I had made it to the the first three practices and. I'll tell you what, man, it is certainly a, a vibe just to get back out there and to see Kenny Dillingham, first and foremost, he's still running, which he shouldn't be doing, right? He He's still recovering from, I believe, surgery on his torn Yeah, uh, I swear that attendant. happened like three weeks ago. Yeah, so he's <laughs> still like, he should not be running. His doctor definitely probably wouldn't advise that. But the team out there, the energy, the vibes, just all of it has looked really, really good. So I figured today through four practices – it would be a great day to just go through some some takeaways, the the things mm-hmm. that have really stuck out to me, to Shane, while we've been out there. Um, and, and we could just kind of bounce them off the chat and, and, and see what we got here. But the first takeaway that I've got through those first four practices for the Sun Devils is it's something we talked a lot about leading up to the season, the spring season, if you will, is just the depth. Mm -hmm. at that secondary spot now i'm not going to just say the safeties because the corners have really impressed me as well you talk about a guy like javen robinson coming in from washington state but terrence welch had a pick six during a tempo team period today transfer from lsu on the back end you've got Xavier alford back you've got a shamari simmons you've got a kamari wilson who transferred over from florida you got a miles rouser from new mexico state and now ghost i mean cole martin a guy that we have talked so much about Right, transferring over from Oregon, he looks like a dog. And all those are fine and well, but it's not just those guys. What stood out to me is there are some returners that maybe people forgot about or didn't talk a whole lot about this offseason. A guy like Ed Woods, a guy like Mason Williams, who his teammates continue to talk about, or even guys that were freshmen last year, Montana Warren, Keith Abney. Those are a couple guys that I certainly see playing a, a monstrous role for this Arizona State defense, but that first takeaway is it's anyone's guess. Okay, so just just before we even talk about any specifics, do you realize the amount of names that you just listed? <laughs> yeah, it's it's right. A, it's a lot of names. Like right? com- a lot compare of dogs. right now to 365 days ago. Oh, yeah, like the amount of names, the quality of names, stuff like that. It's it's vastly different, right? So Absolutely. going into the spring football, we were excited just to see iron sharpening iron. Right? Yeah, like competition, but it it really does actually play out when you start looking at everybody and saying. Who can step up? Who can be like in college football? There are always those guys that you kind of don't expect to step up. And I think both of us look at Cole Martin as like, okay, that's 
somebody that you can definitely expect yeah. to have a major role. He's the cream of the crop, for sure. Right. Outside of that, like it could be really a, a lot of those different guys could be mixed in and used yeah. in different ways, which is very exciting. Yeah, you love to see it. I do want to get to Donald's comment earlier. Just thank you, Donald. Uh, the of red, course the, you the, want to get to I the one that he says red's my color. Yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, but no, you, you're right. And I think you, you talk about last season specifically, and there were there were certainly coverage issues in the secondary. It, they, there wasn't a whole lot of depth. There were still some guys learning, mm -hmm. right? There were injuries. And now you've got a unit with so many different guys that to your point, I feel like you can start to implement packages for specific players mm -hmm. simply because now you have you can play off the strengths of some of those guys, right? You talk about just at that nickel corner spot. Brian Carrington talked earlier uh, before spring ball even started about who was going to be competing for that. It was going to be Cole Martin. It was going to be Keith Abney. And it was going to be Mason Williams. Well, mm -hmm. now you start to see Keith Abney lining up outside from time to time, right? So I don't think there is going to be a, a set spot for anybody really other than Cole Martin and then maybe some of the safeties yeah. simply because Cole Martin to Brian Ward's point is a unicorn at that position. He can really do it all. Yeah. But there is so much size and length in the secondary that they didn't have last year. So you can feel confident already through four practices that if a guy goes down immediately, you're like, okay, I've got confidence in the next group. And that's without even mentioning any of the freshmen that we've seen. Tony Lewis and Cuba's had a, a really start strong uh, a strong start to spring. Rodney Bimmage is at a, a strong start to the spring. Like there are so many guys in the secondary and it's Brian Ward can just do so much with it. Man. Yeah. And, and to Shane's point says to play devil's advocate. We were really excited about all the names we listed last year too. And, and it's not that it's, Oh, never excited and now excited. But I think that you can clearly look at the roster this year and last year and, and see uh, a difference. Yeah. Even just in some of the guys that you get transferred, like you said, just like size wise, as well. And it's not that there weren't guys to, you know, be excited about last year, but I think when you look at the roster as a whole, even outside of the secondary position, like like this this roster is more complete. And and I feel like the excitement this year might be based a little bit more in reality where where last year the excitement might have been like hopeful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with with hopeful at all, you know, but if if you look at what's going on here and and some of the transfers and like you when you mention like the size and the length and the athleticism for a coaching staff like this that is trying to build something up from the ground and, yeah. and especially one that likes to try some new things and throw different looks having just tools yeah at your disposal at your disposal and like emphasis on the s at the end of tools cuz not just oh one or one or two guys but yeah. like multiple guys that you can put in in different ways and I know we'll get to the, the clip in a second, but it's like these guys will also teach each other mm -hmm. and they'll learn like, hey, maybe you have a trick on how to use your length and your athleticism or how to track a ball or something like that. And oh, I don't use that, but I use this yeah. instead. And I, I think that's something that when you're trying to to revive a program, like that's massively important. Absolutely. Look, we've talked about it, right? Again, going back to Cole Martin, the, the Oregon transfer, he's a guy – I absolutely see starting. I'd give it about a 99.9% I can't see chance. a world where he, um, if he doesn't start, then somebody has played so out of their people, mind. Multiple people. Yeah. So, and again, this is his first year in the scheme. So getting here, right, he's still focusing on his own game, trying to develop and learn that defensive system. And everybody knows, right? Cole Martin probably knows. He's, mm -hmm. he's probably too humble to say it, that he knows he's a dog on this field. So it's been interesting to talk to him a little bit and just see who is really standing out to him right? right so this is what defensive back cole martin had to say just in terms of guys that have really stepped up and her earned his respect the same at alfred i mean even though he didn't play last year um he spent a whole year just in the film room just making sure everything was perfect um he's gonna be a, a player to watch for sure shamari simmons um him as well um they know this defense like the back of their hand um so being able to watch guys like that and see how they do it day in and day out um and I, I mason williams i keep i keep saying everybody else but mason williams he's an elite technician um being able to see how he plays certain things and be able to see how he does certain things and certain coverages um it, it, it really helps me a lot I think the thing that I love the most out of that is he he just starts listing off people who have been here. Yeah, three right? returners right there. And, and he talks about, oh, well, they know it like the back of their hand. And and Kenny even said, like, we're going to switch some things up, you know, like in, in some sound bites that have been played in the last few weeks. You guys have shown that he's like not just re reviving the same exact scheme. But what was something that we heard across all positions for a lot of these defensive transfers who wanted to come here is they liked the way that ASU played defense. Yeah. 
right? And so if you're leaning on your returners, like immediately what he just pointed out, like for somebody like him, who is immensely talented, has all the potential yeah. in the world and is nobody is guaranteed a spot. Everybody has to earn it, but based off of his past and his potential for what he can do. And I'm sure what you've seen at practice like that, that dude's going to, to be a starter and he's going to be a massive part yeah. of this team. And he's already leaning on guys who have been here to just get caught up to, yeah. to get everything memorized. And I just, ah, I, I'm, I'm just like getting, I'm getting psyched. It's you know? exciting, man. It, it really is exciting. It's crazy again to to be at this point, um, just through four practices and see the the growth just already from from day one to day four. Watching some of these guys, right? Yeah. Like earlier, I said, Laterrence Welch had a pick six today in, in team tempo period. That was a, a great jump on a ball um, over Troy O'Meara. And then you look at some other guys that you know just in one on ones have really stood out to me. A guy like Javen Robinson, the Washington State transfer. Mm -hmm. I know this is his first year at Washington State, but he spent time in this system when Brian Ward and AJ Cooper were in Pullman. So he is picking up picking it up a little bit sooner than maybe some of the other guys. And then again, Keith Abney and Montana Warren, man, just the work that they've put in in the offseason to get to where they're at now has been just it's been ridiculous to watch ridiculous to see and, and Kenny Dillingham has talked at length about Keith Abney specifically as being one of the smartest players mm. on the team right outside of football just what he does in the classroom you know that translates immediately to what he's able to do on the field and I think again he's a guy that you want to talk about a player who doesn't get enough love in the from the media this is a kid in Keith Abney that's going to surprise some people and when when Shane and I were excited to see that this kid didn't enter the transfer portal mm -hmm. at the end of last season, it's for this reason. Because he got bigger, he got stronger, he got smarter, and now he's in year two of a system that he understands. And I think that's mm -hmm. certainly going to be a, a giant part to what he does. But moving on from takeaway number one, I think we could spend the full hour probably talking about the secondary and the entire depth of it. But let's talk about another position that I think is going to eat this entire season oh, you know i want to let's talk about the running backs, that's right man. let's talk about the running backs that's takeaway number two that i've got through the first four practices is the running backs are going to feast this year not just cam scadaboo to carlos brooks relique brown kyson brown even right. specifically before we get to, to scat and some of the other guys let's go ahead and talk about kyson kyson last year as a freshman didn't really do a whole lot and that's you know rightfully so you had scat you had d low um, and really the offensive line wasn't doing enough for these backs to, right. to get acclimated. You could talk about Bull Baldwin as the OC and the issues that you had there. Kyson Brown looks like a bigger running back right now. He is one of the taller running backs on this roster, so I'm going to be interested to see if he fills the void left by a guy like Tevin White, and it's not like yeah. Tevin White did a whole well, about lot, to see, yeah. but the, still. A, a sm and that's the thing is I don't think you need somebody to come in here and just become a world beater out of nowhere. No, absolutely like you, not. You have scat. And and that's going to be your your bread and butter. Yeah. Right? That's going to be the guy, your meat and potatoes, whatever other food reference I can think of. Like, but at the same time, like Donald in chat saying, I want Jason Brown to be fed, or he said feed, but I'm sure he meant fed. Uh there Relique Brown as well. Like there, there are a lot of options here. And with the offensive line, which we'll get to in a second, like that gets me really excited schematically mm -hmm. because this is a very talented and diverse group of players yeah. for a coach that knows how to use players in a very unique way. Yeah. And we we saw it almost, not almost, but we saw it out of necessity with, with Scat last year and the variety of different, even non-running back ways that he was used. But now, when your entire team around the running back room is going to be more solid, including the offensive linemen, including the wide receivers, and, and hopefully with Jaden Rashada's uh, finger gets, the thumb gets figured out, like your quarterback room as well, like your running backs can be just running backs, like weapons, right? And not just only running the ball, but passing as well. It's, it's exciting to see the amount of options. And something that you mentioned with your last point and this point is the, the size, and I want to give a big shout out to ASU's strength and conditioning yeah, staff Joe. because they've done a great job, mm -hmm. a great job of getting these kids bigger, stronger, faster. And Kenny's going to handle the mental side of it and the emotional side of it. And if, if these kids can just continue to get better physically as well, it, it is a true recipe for success. Yeah, absolutely. I think last year in talking about the, the juxtaposition of last year's running back room to this year's running back room i think there was a clear tier right a, you want a tier list if you will of guys that you knew were going to go like scat and d were in really right. their own tier and then after that you had 
freshman Kyson Brown. You had a, a George Hart who had been here for a little bit. You had Tevin White. And that's nothing against those guys at that running back position. It speaks more to of what Scat and D'Lo were as running backs coming to Arizona State as transfers, right? Yeah. And then you look at this year's group. You talk about Coach Joe. You talk about the summer. You talk about a new offensive coordinator, Marcus Arroyo. And in all honesty, like the tiers are different. Right. Yes, you have Scat up here with D'Lo. I do believe DeCarlos Brooks is one of the most slept on players on this entire team. Um, but you, you, you bring in a guy like Raleigh Brown. I talked about Kyson Brown getting bigger. This is without Jason Brown Jr., the freshman that's going to be in here in the fall, who I think, again, is certainly going to compete for reps at yeah. that spot. And then George Hart. George Hart, look, he's gotten a lot bigger. And shout out George Hart for not transferring. Right, because yeah. this is a kid certainly that hasn't got a whole lot of run at Arizona State over the last couple of seasons, but he stayed committed to the program. He stayed committed to what Kenny is trying to build in these offensive coordinators. He looks bigger. He looks faster. He looks better. Now, I couldn't tell you if he's going to be taking reps from any of these guys because D'Lo, Scat, and Relic are the real deal, a three-headed monster. But you can feel confident, I think, at a certain point to be like, okay, if there's not as big of a gap right. between these running backs as there were last season. And again, a big part of that is shout out Coach Joe for everything that he's done. And look, you still got an entire summer. Oh, right? an yeah, entire we're in summer spring ball right to now. To add to to what these kids are doing, and it's it's gonna be a lot of fun to see. We talk a lot about Scat, and rightfully so, because of everything that he did last year. We got the chance to catch up with him the other day. Doesn't sound like he's gonna be doing everything under the sun for Arizona Good. State. He's focused <laughs> on just being a running back Good. this season. And I asked Scat on Saturday just. What's different about year two here in Tempe? And this is his answer. It's the demandingness. Like I said, uh, they ask for more. They're demanding more. Um, they're not. They're not taking no for an answer, and they're making everything, um, everything more effort. You can't. You know. They they see. They see when you're not giving effort. They call it out. They record you when you're not getting effort. So it's hard not to give effort at, at this point. The effort, the energy, you know, it's typical coach speak that the coach is going to tell you of like, this is what we want to see. Mm -hmm. But again, being out there, the energy is different. Yeah. The culture, you can start to see. And it's something that Shane had asked Kenny a, a little bit uh, on, on Saturday. Just like, do you feel like in year two, like through spring already, like you're starting to see the culture shift? And, and Kenny's answer was, do you think it is? Like he asked him the question right back and and. In reality, it's because Kenny does this every day. He's around right. the program every day. He equated it a little bit to like you see your brother like lose 20 pounds or gain 20 pounds of muscle, right? Like it, you're around them so much that you don't really see it. It's normal to yeah. you. So from the outside looking in through four practices, yeah, I can tell you the culture has changed far from what it was when it was the final year of Herm. Hano was trying to bridge from Herm to Kenny. So it's, it's been fun to see. And I think the running backs again is something that's been consistently good throughout the last couple of seasons at Arizona state. And yeah. I don't see that changing this season. I almost see it getting better. And ASU fans are so used to having a bell cow, right? We're used to a Cam Scadaboo last season. We're used to an Xavier Valade, a Rashad White, Nino Benjamin, a Demario Richard. Like this year, I think you truly have the ability to have a thousand yard rusher in scat while also having two 500 yard rushers yeah. in D low in relief. I think there is that level of talent at that running back spot. I mean, when we did the the tier list of ASU position groups that it was pretty clear who was at the top. Yeah. And they are at the top and you're right. Like they got better than last year. And you could argue that Cam Scadaby was the best player on the team. And when you have the best player on the team, and you keep them around for another year, stronger, faster, smarter, like you said before. And then you fill up behind them. You keep to Carlos Brooks, and hopefully he can stay healthy. And then you have, like Clint saying, like, run the damn ball. Like, you've got the options now. And yeah. you have a bunch of different ones. And, and back to your, your culture thing as well. Of course, it doesn't feel different for Kenny because you can just tell by the way that he operates, by the way that he talks, that this man lives what he speaks. Yeah. He, he doesn't just say something and then go about his day doing something differently. So he's lived the culture. He is yeah. the culture. He breathes the culture every single day. Everything to him is the culture. But it takes time yeah. for that to build, especially when the program is in the state that ASU was. And that is recovering from a very tumultuous yeah. previous regime. ASU football is was in rehab last year. Yeah. And they had a very positive influence leading them, but it just needed time to catch up to what he was building. And, and that's how you know that, A, he's so confident in what he does because 
he has stuck with and not that it's been like five years and it's not working, but he stuck with it. He has continued to, to preach the same thing, treat everybody the same way. And he is getting validated yeah. for it through the transfers, through how the players talk about him, like through the perception of this program. I mean, guys, like we are excited about ASU football, you Legit- be. like you legitimately be. excited about what is going on here. And that is a, a, a far cry from maybe what we were talking ourselves into uh, in, in years past and, and hoping for. I feel like what everybody is looking at now is a real solid foundation. Oh, absolutely. I do want to get to Beats by Ban S question that he had oh, earlier. Um, uh, Totri, with Jaden being out, how worried are you about the offense bonding with him? Um, not at all. Jaden was here last year. There are guys that transferred into this program to play with Jaden specifically um, just because they played with him in the past and they love the type of player that he is. Um, and I actually had a really, really interesting conversation with Ralph Ampson, who was out at, at practice just today, talking about Marcus Arroyo and really what Marcus Arroyo had to convince Justin Herbert during his time at Oregon in terms of like, it's okay that you're introverted. Like you can still be a leader if you're introverted and the world has kind of conditioned people to think that introverts can't be leaders. And I sat there and thought thought about it a little bit and I was like, that is so true, but it's it's also just such a great fit for Jaden Rashada because Jaden Rashada Mm -hmm. isn't the most vocal guy out there. And and it's, sure, he is maybe a little bit more introverted, but he can still be a leader for this team. I think Marcus Arroyo is a perfect offensive coordinator to try and, get the most out of him as a leader, as a quarterback. Um, And it's, again, I've got no issues with him missing spring if he's going to miss the entirety of it or if he's only going to throw a little bit, like, it is what it is. Like he he got injured, right? But like you said, he he was around this team all last year. He's still around. He's going to continue to be around them now, even if he's not practicing. And he is somebody who very clearly wants to be here and very clearly wants to be a part of the program. And I like what you said about the introverted thing, because Like leadership, it takes form in many different ways. And it's quite the discussion across all sports, professional, collegiate is, is this person a leader? Will they get in people's face? Well, as long as you're holding your teammates accountable, it doesn't really matter how you do it. You can do it by playing really well yourself and just talking to guys. Yeah. You don't got to be rah, rah, get in their face, screaming at them. Like, sure, there's benefits to that type of leadership, but not everybody responds well to that. And maybe that's not what the what your players are supposed to. Maybe that's what no. the coaches are supposed to do, right? Like bond with guys, get them to trust you, get them to like you, which I'm I'm sure he will the more time he spends yeah. around all these new faces. It's it's a valid question because chemistry is such a big part of it is. football and and this team has gone through so much, especially with injuries over the past year that Having extra time, and obviously, ideally, you'd like him to be around for spring practice. Oh, but yeah, of course. In the long run, for somebody who's been out here, there. Yeah, like, he's not sitting in his room playing. No, he's it. out there. He's, like, he's there. He's dressed everything. Like, he's he's out there going, taking the reps that he can, right? Yeah. And I think, again, b- before I move off this topic, just, like, it, it's so easy in sports to get fascinated with the idea, like you said, of leadership and what it means and how you do it. And a lot of it is, oh, you got to be the most vocal guy out there. Yeah. And it goes back to like, what are you taught when you're like 10 years old, right? Like lead by example. They be don't yourself teach, too. They don't, they don't teach you how to lead by simply being the loudest kid in the classroom, right? Yeah. Or being the, the loudest kid playing Pop Warner football. It is quite literally do your job and lead by example. You mm-hmm. do that at a position of importance like quarterback. Guess what? The team is going to follow behind yeah. you. And people can tell if you're faking. Like, oh, pe- yeah. like people, if you're not an, an extroverted person and you're trying to like put it on and, and get in people's face and yell, but like you don't even believe it. Like, look, some people, that's how they lead and that's who they are. And it takes a very special type of person to pull that off. But if you're trying to be something you're not, like it's not going to work. You want to be authentic. And, and speaking of authentic, there is nothing more authentic in the Valley than Gila River Resorts and casinos because truly like nobody does it better than them. If you want to have a staycation, if you want to have just one night, go out, have some fun, go to their state-of-the-art gaming floor, all of their slot machines, blackjack tables, live table games, themed tables with different sports around Arizona, or you want to go watch some sports at the Bet MGM Sportsbook, or you want to come to one of our watch parties that's happening this weekend on the 5th and the 7th. Listen, you can do all that in one place gila river resorts and casinos they set the bar high because everything i said while it's true that's not all they've got concerts they've got food from upscale to approachable poolside rooftop i mean they really have everything that you need so 
The only important thing that you remember to do, whether you're an extroverted or introverted leader, is you do you. At Gila River Resorts and Casinos, visit playatgila.com for more details. You mentioned you could do everything over at Gila River Resorts you and can. Casinos. And does that include sports betting? Oh, it does, especially at the BetMGM Sportsbook. There you go, guys. Now, look, maybe you're headed over to Gila River Resorts and you're going to bet at the Sportsbook, but maybe you don't have the time to go out there on a Tuesday afternoon and you know there's a full slate of NBA games. We're nearing the postseason. You got some great matchups. Well, you could do it on your phone. Right, and they've still got a great offer for you guys to take advantage of. Download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your BetMGM Sportsbook account and place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if that bet loses. Now, if the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Shout out Shane Diefenbach for his pick that he had yesterday on the show. His parlay pick was just easy money. He had Devin Booker over 25 and a half points in the Suns to win. That was an absolute lucky charm. got that in like the first quarter. That was a lucky so charm crazy. last night, guys. Again, just to recap, sign up for BetMGM and use that bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10, and you guys are going to receive up to $1,500 in bonus bets if that bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details, and now listen to Big Pokey himself talk about the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 8778-HOPE-NY-467-369-NEW York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right, let's get back to some of our takeaways that we've seen through the first few spring practices. Number three for me is the wide receiver room is going to be about five deep, maybe six, maybe six. It's been interesting to watch. We know some of these wideouts have been held back. We've seen Xavier Guillory work his way back just a mm-hmm. tad. Jordan Tyson, he was working his way back today, had a really nice rep on um, during one-on-ones, and it's it's interesting just to see, right? So let's say five deep for okay. me. Fully healthy, we're talking Elijah Badger. Yep. We're talking Jake Smith. Yep. We're talking Xavier Guillory. Yep. Jordan Tyson Mm -hmm. and Troy O'Meara. Those are the five that, in my mind, you could throw out there confidently, and you are going to have a pretty talented wide receiver room. It's a a good group. And I feel really, really comfortable with the first four that I mentioned. I think Troy, he he came on a lot last season. He's got a, a great, great body to be a a jump ball vertical threat wide receiver i'm interested to see how marcus arroyo uses him in this offense sweet prince kenny talking a little bit about xavier guillory he did have some some drop issues last season um i can think back to a specific like specifically there's one moment that i think donald's referring to um but again xavier guillory is a very talented wide receiver he he if he can get the i think nerves i think nerves is simply what it was yeah and again you want to judge the wideouts last season, that's fair. But also, like, you have to understand they played with quarterbacks that were, eh. And they were rotating. And they played with, like, five of them. Yeah, they were rotating. They were not only rotating quarterbacks, they were rotating offensive line. I, it's hard to really judge a lot of players, especially not, like, the best of the best. Like, even Elijah Badger didn't have the season that Elijah Badger would want to have. Yeah. Right? Because of the situation that he was in. But he obviously still found a way to impact the game. The, the only difference is with guys that aren't Elijah Badger is that with some of these, I'm not going to say lower end receivers, but not like your your number one option. They're not your superstars. Right? You're, you're, you're not your guy that you're drawing up a good percentage of your plays or not your first read or whatever, but still, still dangerous. Still guys that can do something. If you don't have consistency at the quarterback position, whether it's through actual play, as in this guy can consistently deliver me the ball where I want it and at the right time in the right place, or B the person throwing the ball is the same person yeah. as it was last week, last snap, <laughs> last possession. It's really hard to get in a groove and it's really hard to grow yeah. throughout a season, but you get an off season to focus on yourself, to focus on your body. And yes, you're kind of sitting in the same spot right now at the quarterback position, but you're confidently saying it's going to be one of two guys. It's either going to be Jaden Rashada or it's going to be Sam leave it. And that is, at its own, at a floor, I think is higher than last season in oh, that yeah. entire quarterback room. And it's it, it was a tough circumstance for everybody. So, yeah, there, there are some plays that I'm sure a lot of guys would like to get back. And I don't think you can fully judge how good somebody is based off of just their performance last season. 
However, we go into this season and, and stuff gets a little bit more evened out, more level playing field, and the same stuff happens, then you start to to piece things yeah, together. But we're absolutely. not we're not there yet. No, absolutely. And I say five deep, maybe six, six receiver. I, I think Melquan Stovall is probably a guy you're you're certainly gonna see at times um for Arizona State. I think he's a very, very solid wide receiver. I think if man, I'm telling you, if this guy was the size of Troy O'Meara, he'd be he'd be a number one wide receiver because mm-hmm. he does have he's phenomenal hands, great route running, great um, short bursts. It, it's it's really really awesome to see. Now, Caleb Black is a is a wide receiver last year who was really starting to he was impressing me just with the way he was running his routes. He's a very quick wide receiver. I would like to see more out of his hands just mm-hmm. in terms of being consistent um, catching the football. Um, and, and again, I think that's something he could develop in the spring. Potentially, you could see him um, in the fall. Again, I think a lot of it depends on the health. The transfer portal window, again, opens right after some some time in spring. So it'll be interesting to see some of these loaded position rooms, um, what happens with some of those guys. Yeah. But again, I feel very confident in in five to six. I, I would be – seven would be a push for me. Seven would be a push that's for a me. That's a big room. There's not many wide receivers in the nation um, that actually – have that go six seven deep um and a lot of offenses don't really want to right because again you've got that chemistry you've got that built five four um casual says he was talking about he he thinks sam leave is going to be the quarterback again i've, I've said it multiple times on this show i think it is going to be a closer quarterback competition than maybe some people initially thought mm. i think sam leave is a is a he his body is completely filled out um so you, you don't have any giant issues in, in terms of his size he does have a really really good deep ball i know he, five yeah four five four man your name is just messing with my head i can't remember. maybe i'm dyslexic i can't read well i think right. it's also the casual is spelled c-a-s-u-l so Cas- it's like casual, it, you, maybe? the brain, I don't know. The brain I don't just know. isn't processing he, he was insane. talking about the the progressions and all that type of stuff and you also have to understand right like jane rashada in terms of what he was doing last season being thrust into the starting quarterback spot like he was still learning, right? Yeah. And, and him and Sam are still learning. I'm not going to sit here and tell you which one's better at going through progressions because that's a very difficult thing to to see. Uh, yes, it doesn't help that Jaden is missing in terms of physical reps being out there, but he's taking mental reps, and that's huge, right? That is yeah. huge for a quarterback. And again, me saying some things is maybe not going to steer your opinion one way or another, and I'm not trying to steer your opinion i i know you're probably a part of some of the message boards and you can read their scouting reports but i'm out there every single day and i see these guys throw i see these guys go through progressions i see these guys take the mental reps i see these guys talk to them so like there is a little bit uh, of a difference and again Jaden is sam is not going to earn outright this starting quarterback spot without Jaden being out yeah there. that that quarterback competition will be solidified in the fall Um, So, yes, these are important reps, but certainly it is going to be a full out competition when you get to Camp T in fall. And that's probably when you'll get your starting quarterback. So and and I think that's that's all part of the plan. Like and it is Casul. So four, five, four Casul. Sorry for for mispronouncing that earlier. Um, But I think the reason why they bring Sam in is because he's a good quarterback. Yeah, they didn't they didn't bring him in. So that Jaden Rashada can just easily be named, you know, your your QB one. Like and, and that's why there was even a conversation right after Sam came here of how is Jaden Rashada going to respond and how he responded was exactly how you wanted him to respond, which was basically bring it on. Like this is a competition. I ain't scared. I ain't running. And sure. There's things that Jaden needs to improve on and you haven't seen a ton from Sam. um, But that's what Kenny wants. Kenny wants somebody that can arguably be your, your QB one besides Jaden Rashada because a, injuries and b that's going to make both of them better and i think another great point is what buddha brings up in the chat which is 25 (laughs) people watching only eight likes come on guys hit that like button hit that like i'm looking at you hit that like button hit the like button hit Hit the subscribe if you haven't already last point about the quarterback so we could continue through through our takeaways is i said in our diehard discord i'm not sure if i've said it um on the show yet but sam leave it in my estimation is the best quarterback the best transfer quarterback that has come to arizona state that i have ever seen okay now that includes Paul Tyson, who transferred from Alabama. Yeah. That includes Blake Barnett when he transferred way a million years ago yeah. from Alabama. That includes Drew Pine. That includes Jacob Conover. He is by far, it's not close, by far the best transfer quarterback to transfer to Arizona State. And again, you don't need me to say that, right? Like Kenny Dillingham, Marcus Arroyo, they went and they got their quarterback that they wanted from the portal. 
Um, and again, it, it's going to be an outright competition and you want a guy that is talented that can do all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. Moving on to our fourth takeaway through the first four practices is the offensive line competition is maybe going to be the most intriguing of Love them it. all. We talked about the depth at secondary and how you're going to have some competitions there. You talked about the wide receiver room, the running backs, how yes, there's their solidified stars, whatever. The O-line competition is certainly the most unique to me because I think as it stands right now, you probably only have one solidified starter. And that mm -hmm. is Leaf, your starting center right. returning from last season. I Again, I would be the same way I give Cole Martin a 99.9% .9 chance to start. Leaf is a 99.99% he's a 99 .99 chance to start because he's just that good along the offensive line. Now, you talk about some of the other offensive linemen that could potentially be those guys for Arizona State in 2024. You got a guy like Sean Na, who was a true freshman last year, really came on. I believe he's at 6'3", 300 pounds now. So he's, he's certainly grown. Um, you, you've got guys like a Ben Coleman, who's been pretty impressive. He didn't get to mm -hmm. play last season because of injury. Um, then you talk about some of the guys that they added through the transfer portal. A guy like a Joey Sua. Um, the, you, then you got the transfer from uh, New Mexico State. Like There are just so many guys along this offensive line and then you've got some returners, right? In right? like a Kyle Scott, like certainly there is going to be a lot of competition. And I think one thing that you can just sit with and exhale is that there's at least some depth, right? Dude, that's, you got reserves that's, here. And so that's the big thing. I remember as soon as like the season was over and the college football off season starts, we were sitting in here and people were rightfully asking, where's the beef? Like where, where is the depth for the offensive line? We need some big bodies in here. And it took a little bit, but they've gotten them. Yeah. And, and uh, it's just like, it's a sigh of relief because everything else that we talked about and everything else that we will talk about throughout the entire spring and, and summer, none of it works. None of it works if the offensive line isn't solid. Yeah. Anything that Kenny wants to implement, any of the wide receiver success, the quarterback success, the running back success, anything like that, it's it doesn't work if the offensive line is not protecting and yeah. wasn't like putting up like very, very good. I mean, numbers is an interesting way to, to, to grade offensive linemen, but you know what I mean? Like when yeah. I say that, just like good performances, if they're, if they're not doing that, then it doesn't matter who's your quarterback. It doesn't matter how stacked your wide receiver and your running back room is. If they're getting tackled five seconds after they get handed the ball. It's over. No, I mean, you're five absolutely like right. Two seconds. You're absolutely right. Right. And then like the size. The size and the length, again, it's something that we talked about in terms of the secondary. The size and the length now at the offensive line position is interesting, right? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, Sean Na, I'm looking at it right here, 6'3", 300 pounds. You bring back Emmett Bull, 6'7", yep. 320 pounds. Bram Walden, 6'4", 305. Kyle Scott, 6'5", 330. Like, it, it's it's been really, really fun to see just out there the, the, the size of some of these guys. And that may sound a little bit like, what are you talking about? Well, like when you're, it's one thing to watch it on TV, right? And you see Oregon, you see Washington, you see the SEC schools, some of those Big Ten schools. You watch them go beat up, right? You watch them just go dominate some of their opponents. Mm -hmm. And you can't really tell. You can hear what 6'7 looks like. You can hear it. Until you're on the field next to it, you don't get how big 6'7, 330 pounds is, <sighs> right? It's, this, it's, it's bigger than a Ford fucking Focus out there. And- like it, it matters. It matters along the offensive line. And now you've got guys that have done it, right? Guys that have done it at other schools. I know um, we had Donald talking about the Hawaii transfer, Josh Atkins, the Richard Jr. Like this is a kid again, 6'4", 290 pounds. Like this is a big dude now that you could throw in there and compete. The freshman, Terrell Kim, 6'4", 328. Like there is just I some- that again, 6'4", 328. Yeah. Yeah. Like, again, it, it, when you read it off a page, like you said, it doesn't really stick out to you. But it do, it's not just, oh, ASU's offensive lineman. Like, if you just go, like, professional athletes, like, go to an NBA game or a college basketball game, like, you hear that Zach Eady is 7'4". You, you don't get you, how big 7'4 is. You stand next to 7'4", it is completely different. And this is what this team needed. Like, this team needed big strength like beef size and it's not that they had none of it last year but they didn't have enough of it to overcome obviously a, a very unfortunate string of injuries yeah, absolutely but i would say like this year i'm way more confident that not even just injuries but like you gotta shuffle offensive linemen in and out 
And I am very confident that when one comes out, another one's coming in that can replicate the size yeah. uh, of before. So I, uh, I love it, man. I, and, and I think even though it's like an O-line competition, like I think this is a group that doesn't, they don't care who starts. They just care that who, who plays. And I think a lot of guys are going to play. How big were you as a freshman in college? I'm bigger than I am now. I was uh, six just, one, just like uh, 6'1", 220. 6'1", 220? Yeah. You would get tossed around like, like a, a rag Like doll. a baby. I get tossed around even more now. Two of the freshmen, two of the freshmen that had come in, right, aside from Terrell Kim, who I mentioned is a freshman, 6'4", 328. Um, you've got Suka, right? He is 6'5", 272. I know we were hyped about him. And Samisi Tunga, 6'4", 310. Champ Westbrook, 6'4", 265. All freshmen. You're starting to see these... Arizona State is trying to go get younger and develop these guys that have the body types yeah. for it, right? And, and again, just a little teaser. We talked a little bit about the the uh, class of 2025 commit that Arizona State got at the offensive tackle position. 6'7", 292 is going to be your class of, of 2025. Watch out for that diehard only content. Good You're content. Gonna, we're going to be— Good film. Going to be looking at, at all of that for all those PHNX diehards. Johnny Meeks in the chat talking a lot about Borgay, his his football IQ, his intelligence, yeah. um, and why he's not necessarily a part of the quarterback competition. I think he will probably be a part of that quarterback competition, but I tend to write – I don't want to say write him off, but I tend to put his chances of starting a little bit lower than some of the yeah. other guys um, simply because it is so valuable to have a younger guy at, at this age and at this point where Arizona State is to have a younger guy start a quarterback – we saw what Trenton did two years ago when he was, you know, kind of thrust into the role when Emory Jones went down, and it was solid at times. And then you saw yeah. last season, um, and really, you know, it, it's it's a split fault, right? You could talk about the injuries, the depth, the, the coordinating issues. Like it, it just wasn't a great year for the ASU offense. I think Trenton Borgay is one of the smartest football players that I have ever been around, mm -hmm. um, and I think he is an integral part of what Arizona State is doing in that quarterback room and just a phenomenal piece for Arizona State to have as a player, as a person, to have that Borgay family. Now, if he goes out there and, and wins his quarterback competition, then... Everything's then on the table. Like, Ken, Kenny has basically said, like, you, everybody has to come in and earn their spot. And if Borgay shows up and just dices everybody up and just completely outplays every other quarterback, he will be your starting quarterback on, on, on day one, game one of the season. Like that, that will be the reality because that's just the type of coach and the type of culture that they're building here. I, I think a lot of people have pointed out uh, good points in the chat, like his arm strength isn't there. And if we're talking about who represents being a sun devil, if we're talking about who is like a really good person or who is invested or who is the smartest or anything like that, like you, you can make an argument or not even like just say it's Trent Borgay. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But there's there's more that goes into this. And and Sharon also says in the chat, like after this season, she believes that Dilly will work with him to begin his coaching career. Wouldn't be surprised if that name oh, is, is around in, in Tempe for quite some absolutely. time. Absolutely. And he part of that is he understands. And he understands not just like his places and sit in the corner and do nothing, but how important he is, whether he's on the field or just practicing for this team. So he, he's a massive asset to this uh, program right now. I'm just not sure it's as their starting quarterback. Yeah, and Johnny in the chat thinks Rashada is an interception liability. I I will disagree with you on that one. I think, again, it's way too early in his playing career to, to, to judge him. And if you're going to judge him off, what, the five games that he played last mm -hmm. season with a makeshift offensive line, receivers being out, um, offensive coordinators changing yeah. on him, like then it, it then, was such a bad. Like I said before, it was such a bad. That's that's way totally to judge your people. prerogative as like, a fan to to if you want to do that. But again, I I think again, Rashada has a little bit more of a chip on his shoulder now this season, and I don't think he is really a liability yeah. um, at all. So it's there's a reason that this kid was at one point a five star coming yeah. out of high school. So. He, and again, like we said before, you can't judge people because based on the circumstances of last season, you, you can only really take a little bit of that and say, oh, that's who they are going to be. But something with like a grain of salt. Yeah, with a grain of salt. Like you can figure something out and you saw the flashes from Rashada. So you can highlight those as much as you do the negatives. But the, the jury is, is so still out on Jaden Rashad and so many of the talented players from last year's team. But the jury's not out on Arizona Lottery Correct. because they decided and they said 
damn it, that's a win. Because the new uh, initiative by Arizona Lottery and their new ticket promotion called Arizona Adventure is fantastic because it involves multiple things that I enjoy and I'm sure you enjoy as well. And two of them involve touching green. One is touching grass and the other mm. is touching cash. And you can do that with just one ticket because these new Arizona Adventure Lottery tickets feature three iconic landscapes across Arizona and have prizes up to $50,000, right? Okay, cool, you can win 50K, end of story wrong you can also check in at geolocated adventures at 10 different destinations from across the state anywhere from flagstaff to yuma north south east west all the directions like that just visit www.azadventure.com for details you scan in at the geolocated adventure and then you get entered for a chance to win one million dollars in cash and arizona travel prizes Explore this state while it's still not a hundred million degrees outside. Like, do this now. Win some yeah. money. Touch some grass. Plus, a pro portion of all the proceeds from the ticket purchases go to conservation and other efforts across a great state 48. It's really a win-win-win, guys. So the Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's about giving back to the state and community. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Yeah, definitely take advantage of everything that AZ Lottery has got going on. Also take advantage of OGs, guys, because yes, March Madness is still in full swing, but it's also gummy madness season. Follow along as eight competing dispensaries put gummy versus gummy against each other each week in a bracket to determine a champion. I can't think of anything more fun. Vote for your favorite gummy as the winner is gummy going to receive a BOGO offer. Follow along to see who wins. And while we're talking about gummies, how about OGs, right? They have the best scratch-made gummies in the Valley, and they've launched two new products made with live rosin and RSO. We're talking about the OGs Naturals and the big OGs. There's obviously people out there that have different dietary restrictions, yeah. right? There's people that are vegan. There's people that eat Everything under the sun. But for those of you that are vegan, the OG's Naturals are vegan gummies made with live rosin. They're available in a sweet clementine flavor. Now, meanwhile, the big OG's gummy is a mega version of Peg's mega. Raspberry Orange RSO, one of the company's most popular products. It is literally a giant gummy that it's 100 total milligrams of THC. Now, you can cut it into slices. It's ten, a big boy. Ten slices, right? Ten little, it's like a, it's like a gummy pizza. Yeah. If you will. So definitely go check it out and to learn more about OG's gummies and where you can find them. Head on over to OGsbrands.com. You do gotta be 21 plus to enjoy responsibly. Whenever we do the the gummy madness stuff, I imagine in my head like a ESPN 30 for 30 on like, what if I told you <laughs> that OG's naturals made a run? To the final four. Oh my gosh. When nobody Are they in 11 seed? Right. Like, you know, like, I, like, I don't know. I just, I just think like, oh, what if there was a, a doc, uh, like a documentary on that? And uh, 454, I think, sums up the QB uh, competition uh, in a yeah. very, very good way. Regardless of who wins, I'm really looking forward to the QB competition in fall camp. Exactly. Whether it is Rashada, leave it, Borgay, whatever. Whoever comes out and plays the best will be the quarterback. And whoever does that has a really good shot at yeah. helping this ASU offense. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, we've talked a lot about the the offense and, and obviously the secondary um, on the defensive side of the ball. Our last takeaway that we're going to be talking about has to do with an interesting position group, kind of a mix of the mm -hmm. offensive line and the wide receiver room, obviously. The tight ends. The tight ends, for me, feel like they could be an X factor as to how this offense is going to function. Mm -hmm. Because we've heard in the past Arizona State doesn't use their tight ends. Arizona State has some talented tight ends. Now this year, the tight end room looks real different than it did last year. Last Very. year, you had guys like Bryce Pierre, Jalen Conyers, Messiah Swinson. Now you only really got BP back in that room. Messiah ran out of eligibility, and then you had Jalen transferring over to Texas Tech. So not only do you have a guy in Bryce Pierre who's been waiting in the wings to take that tight end one spot, but you bring in guys like a Marcus and Douglas, who we talked about Emmett Bull being the size of a Ford Focus. Well, I would say Marcus and Douglas rivals maybe that of a rhinoceros. Probably two Ford Focuses. A rhinoceros who can other. catch, right? Who can catch, who can run routes, and it's it's been just remarkable to see out there yeah. what he does because it's one thing to see it on film it's another to go out there and see it in person and you bring in the san diego state transfer and cameron harpool who is a a run blocking tight end through and through and then this is without Jaden fortier really getting to arizona state he gets here in the fall um so when you're talking about this tight end room it's it's certainly going to be a unique group to to watch and, and see what they're able to accomplish yeah but it's 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 so damn different. And we talked to Bryce Pierre on Saturday, and this is what BP had to say, just in terms of the vibes of a new look tight end room. 
just competitiveness, you know. Everybody's very competitive, but we like to joke around and, you know, bring it and make it fun for each other, you know. Pretty similar to last year how me, Jalen, Messiah were, but, you know, just a, it's a different vibe to it. Everybody has their own skill set and talent that they bring to the room, so I think it would be good. I think the exciting part about all of this is kind of how you set it up, where they're a mix of wide receivers and offensive line. Yeah. And to have so much at your disposal from a position that maybe they say, oh, ASU doesn't throw the ball to their tight ends as much, but I promise you their tight ends are being used. Yeah. It's just maybe it's to support the run game, which we know that if Kenny's going to do something, it's going to be run the ball. Oh, yeah. And, and having guys that can that can do that, but also throw in others that give different looks and, and will be used primarily as wide receivers, it, it just adds another layer to all of this. And layers is what this team lacked. Last year. Yeah. And for, for very different reasons. It's not because there wasn't good players on the team, but I do think that the talent is better overall on the roster this Agreed. year than it was last year. Injury-wise, like <laughs> it, it's going to be hard to replicate the the circumstances of last year, purely injury-wise. And then as far as like actual skill sets go, like they just have players, if we're just talking about the tight end room, that can do Everything that you would want a tight end to do in any different situation, mm -hmm. whether it's run, not run, whether it's block for a run, whether it's catch, like whether it's do a little bit of both and be somebody that the uh, defense has to watch in that sense, that opens up everything else and everything else that we talked about today. And that is, it's exciting. It's exciting to see like, okay, where, where's the fault, right? Like where can we poke a hole? Where, where is like the armor not as strong? And we went through basically the entire offense, <laughs> yeah. the entire, because we also talked about quarterbacks outside of this and like the biggest question mark probably is quarterback. And that's okay. If everything else isn't really a question mark anymore. Yeah. And it's funny. We talk about the whole offense really being our takeaways today. And I'll tell you what, through the first four practices, the, the defense is one. If I had to give that you a winner, if I had enough. to give you a winner, it's the defense. And it's funny because we talk about, oh, the running backs are going to eat. Oh, the wide receivers look good. Oh, the offensive line competition is going to be good. And what does that say about the defense? in year two yeah. of Brian Ward, right? That they're already at that point. And, and usually that's something you see, especially at Arizona State specifically because it seems like every year we got a new offensive coordinator here. <laughs> uh, so they got to implement a new system. But this is, again, there is a lot of talent across the board when you're talking Arizona State football. And again, we'll, we'll do this hopefully every couple of um, sets of spring practices. We're only four through, and this is really what we've got. But it has been certainly exciting to see some of these new guys, some of the returners, and what they've been capable of doing. Uh, Sweet Prince Kenny in the chat talking about where is the golden goose, talking about tight end Jaden Fortier, still recovering from his ACL surgery, um, so he should be back in the fall. Now, whether – I, we talked to Jason Mons before the season started, and he was talking about how it, they're not going to rush him, right, because he is that they golden shouldn't. goose. They really should they, They're going to take their time with him, um, and when he's got the green light, then they'll definitely um, get them out there. But I do want to transition – from ASU football to one final topic here because it has been a little bit of a hot button topic for Arizona State fans here in the Ooh. last 24 hours, 18 to 24 hours. Yeah. And that is this. When this tweet was put out by Texas that Bob Bowman was leaving Arizona State and he was going to be the new director of swimming and diving um, for the Texas Longhorns, Arizona State fans, we're in shambles simply because guess what ASU swim and dive they just won a national championship a few days ago and now you are losing your head coach who is one of the greatest swim and dive coaches in the history of the sport I'm about to say yeah, not just Arizona State but it's like literally, literally the, the, of the sport the sport and it at first I was kind of like everybody else where I was like come on you just <laughs> won a national championship and it's hard when a, a school like texas comes knocking and i'm sure they offer a, 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 yeah. a, a mighty hefty bag absolutely uh, but also my initial thought was okay it would have been nice to have an ad around to maybe handle this and, and I think uh, we're at like 141 days for that. It, right it is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, don't worry. They're just let's being, see if we can go 365. Hey, man, they're just being, just being thorough. Just you know, really making sure that every single corner is is covered, right? Like they they don't want any stone left unturned. No, it's stupid. It's ridiculous, and it's harming the entire uh, program as far as Arizona State University athletics as a whole. Um, however, after breathing a little bit, important. It's important to do. We discussed it prior to the show. Breathing is important. 
I didn't know this. I had to. I had to learn this the from more you guys know, before man, the, the show. More you know. That uh, that breathing is indeed something that you have to do to survive. Didn't yeah, know that. Wasn't, absolutely. Wasn't and fully aware. Look, it wasn't long after Bowman was announced that Arizona State they they tried to calm the fan base down a little. Which bit. Which I think they. I think I think this should calm. They the did. Fan base they down. did. I and think this should. Out, and that's why I had to breathe. They sent out this tweet welcoming their new coach Herbie Bem um, as the new Sun Devil swimming and diving coach. Uh, he was the associate head coach last season. He was a former Sun Devil swimmer himself, was an integral part of this national championship run um, that the Arizona State Sun Devils had. And, I mean, look at that mustache. Good, right? good like, how can you not love that mustache on your swimming He's got the full coach? beard, though, now. He's got the full beard, though, it's now. Just, I, I, I need news. to see the stash back. I yeah. need to see this. Is that, that's, that's what you need to that's feel confident? That's the difference maker. That's the difference for me. No, I, I listen, so this was the thing that calmed me down, right? Because... Uh, I'm going to call him Herb because we're cool like that, you know, so, so you Herb. So I, I saw a video that Herb posted uh, on his Instagram and basically detailed that when he was a part of this program back in 2010, they used to have to fundraise in order to keep the program alive. So this guy for the last 15 years, more or less, has seen this program completely revive itself and bring itself to a place of national dominance. And he is no small part in that whatsoever and the way that he talked about asu and his commitment and his wanting to be involved that gave me gave me a little kenny dillingham vibes gave me a little kenny dillingham vibes okay. just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit because he seemed like somebody who truly cared somebody who has had the success and and somebody who is is a little bit on the younger side right like and that can be a good thing for a program as long as you know there's not a huge fall off but i'm i'm confident i'm, I'm confident in what they have going on and to what they've built and I truly think that while it's not the best look overall to to lose your <laughs> your your main head coach like two days after winning an national yeah, it's not championship, ideal. and it, it points to lots of faults in the entire system as a whole. This is a fantastic Look, follow-up plan. Arizona State doesn't make enough money to what? their athletic department doesn't make enough money for it to make sense. To pay Bob Bowman what Bob Bowman is going to get at Texas, it just it's it's unfathomable, right? For for that to to really come yeah. true. Now I will say, look, I get it, I understand why why Bowman is doing that, and I I think it's awesome that he's going to go get his bag the same way some of these players get their bags. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of some other sports, and you know, on, on a little bit more of a, a personal note, my very first sport I ever covered, uh, period, point blank, period, was Arizona State swimming and diving. Um, when I was at Aww. Arizona State and, and Bowman was like the first coach that I ever interviewed and he has always been an absolute class act um, in, in, on, you know, on that front. And, he, you know, what he he transformed this swimming dive program yeah, 100%. To, 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 to a national champion and has the best swimmer in the world in Leon Marchand um at arizona state and i know there's gonna be some people you know is leon gonna transfer whatever i think that's still a, a tbd if we're talking about swim and dive um, transfer portal stuff man. but look look leon marchand he's a junior graduates in class 2025 would he transfer maybe will he maybe. i don't know um but in reality i i would realistically more than that i could see leon um either finishing his career or finishing his degree and then just yeah. simply being a professional like uh go pro uh, yeah. all the way and again he's He's the best swimmer in the world. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, and and that's also the thing is that it's not like somebody's taking over who doesn't know him, yeah, and his story. And I guarantee you that my main man Herb, <laughs> he has been involved in this guy's growth and, and success. And so I just, I'm not freaking out yet. I mean, it's not a good look, but we have bang this drum for 140 some days you need to get an athletic director you need to get your shit together and until you do that it's not just your footballs and your basketballs that are going to be suffering it's all these other sports that asu actually has way more success in yeah that's going to suffer so i i'm not i'm not worried at all right now about okay. this specific situation with swim and dive. I am worried about the athletic department. The greater as a whole. good. Correct. The greater good. Because it's just not it's just not where you need to be right now. Could be better. Could be better. A little bit. 
It is what it bit. is, man. It is what it is. But that is going to do it for today's Aww. episode of the PHNX Sun Devil Show, but guys. But you're doing so good. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a five-star review if you're listening on audio. And head over to gophnx.com. I said it at the start. I'm going to say it at the finish. Click that Die Hard tab. Do Come it. with the HNX Die Hard. Again, we've got some Sun Devil Die Hard only content coming for all of our PHNX diehards this weekend. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And that's going to be continuing. That's not just a one week thing. We are locked and loaded for all of our PHNX diehards. Guys, in the meantime, give us a follow at PHNX underscore Sun Devils across social. You can follow me at Anthony underscore Totri. You can follow Eric Ruby here at Eric Ruby. That's at Jose Eric Perez with 15. a K. Nah. You can follow DJ Danielle at Abrica Danielle across social media. But we will be back Wednesday at noon. In the meantime, go Devils. Peace. Y'all silly like the mayor. 